Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson and welcome to Simply Single, the men's edition. Today we're going to talk about a very exciting topic and we have a question to ask, but before we do that, I want to introduce you to our guest, Brian Cordell, my man. Welcome back to this broadcast. Good to see you again, man. Good to see you. Thank you. Everything going good? Uh, everything's going well. Can good, man. Go we had a great conversation the last time, so we're yeah. looking forward to doing that again today. Absolutely. Sitting next to you, Mark Lacey. Welcome back to the broadcast, man. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Always good to have you. And of course, we had a great conversation the last time, so we're really going to be counting on you to provide some great input. Definitely. Looking forward to it. As it relates to relationships and male-female relationships, when we think about the fact that oftentimes women are aggressive in the relationship or perhaps assertive or passive, there's a whole range of different responses that women have in relationships. So when we look at those relationships, are women being desperate when they're assertive? Well, guys, that's the question. <laughs> women who pursue men can be defined as assertive, mm -hmm. aggressive, mm -hmm. and certainly passive. But when a woman is aggressive or assertive, they're oftentimes seen as being desperate. What's your take on that? Um, I don't necessarily think that in all cases they're being desperate, but um, oftentimes in my personal experiences, I've witnessed that. And I believe clearly there's a desperation um, at this age in relationships to, uh, to be married, to have a family, if, if uh, the woman doesn't have one. And um, I see it as being desperate and, and, I, and I think the cause of it is that fear that comes from wanting uh, the relationship, the family, the kids, whatever it might be. Um, but in all cases, I don't think that yeah. is, is the case. Yeah, you know, Mark, so many women and men are delaying the decision to get married to they get to be in their late 20s, 30s, that they're well established, that they have their own resources. So part of what we're seeing sometimes is people out there just kind of playing the field and not really ready to make that commitment. But how do you really define the woman who is constantly pursuing the relationship and not really sealing the deal as far as marriage is concerned? And what about that woman who is seeming to be really focused on having that one thing in her life, marriage happen, who can't seem to make it happen. Is she desperate? Well, I, I think now we're living in a very independent era. So it seems to be more socially acceptable for people to wait a little bit later. However, I think any man would be crazy to think that just because she hasn't mentioned it, that she doesn't have it uh, written in a diagram somewhere as far as when she wants to get married and uh, to have children. But as far as the measuring tool is concerned for desperation, I think uh, that is defined by each individual's level of tolerance. You know, and, and they often base it on past experiences and uh, what the current trends in society are. So I don't think there's anything wrong uh, with a woman uh, eyeing a young man and uh, desiring to have uh, a, a relationship with that young man and expressing how she feels about him. But there is a line between being a lady and doing things that are unladylike. Mm. And again, uh, practice and principle uh, seem to be miles apart. But I think it's, uh, it's up ultimately up to the individual's level of tolerance. You know, we're old school guys in a way. Mm -hmm. We come from another generation and we mm -hmm. see so many different changes today. One of the things that's interesting about what you just said, Mark, is that you talked about the idea of women who kind of crossed the line perhaps for doing a particular thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago, there's something called, and they still have them, Sadie Hawkins events where yeah. mm -hmm. the women ask guys out. And yeah. you know, I, I used to look forward to it myself because I was like the ugly duckling back in the day, <laughs> couldn't get a date and stuff like that. So please ask me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you got a situation mm -hmm. uh, where women today don't seem to fear right. making the mm -hmm. first move. Right. We come from a generation where it was kind of like seen as you're not really a gentleman if you're not making a move. Mm -hmm. And so do women get unfairly tagged with the label of being desperate because we live in a more open, more tolerant society, like Mark said? Um, something that Mark said, our, our society is so open and free now. I don't really think uh, the majority of people even look at it as desperation. Therefore, mm -hmm. I don't. 
I don't believe that, that women get tagged with it um, that much. Um, yeah, I, that, that's the first thing that came to my mind when I, when I heard him say, uh, talk about our society now and how open and free it is. Um, I really don't see women getting tagged that much with uh, a label like that. Yeah, it seemed like there was a time when people would kind of see women who were chasing guys, per se. Mm -hmm. um, and that, of course, was a perception mm -hmm. that somebody had. And maybe that's because she had multiple relationships or multiple attempts at relationships that none seemed to really work out. So people might begin talking about her in a particularly negative way. Um, I agree with what you're saying, Brian, about the unfairness of that label mm -hmm. being desperate. But, Mark, I'm wondering about your own personal relationship, you know, as a mm -hmm. single person um, who's in their 40s. And um, I'm sure you've had, you know, opportunities to experience uh, women in ways that women have come at you. And and they were the ones that made the move, per se. They, you know, asked you out and stuff like that or showed their interest in you. As a man, how did you feel about that? And how do you feel about that? Well, I personally did not have a, a problem with it because um, there were instances where if she didn't say anything, I wouldn't know it. You know, I, I would not know that there was an interest. I think a lot of guys had this mentality that they don't mind being chased by a particular woman. However, if she gets clingy, that's when they start talking, oh, she's desperate. You know, so again, uh, I, I think men have to be more realistic in that, uh, you know, you're dealing with a woman and there's gonna be some emotions tied to some actions. So uh, once you find out that she is interested and if you are interested, you need to st state firmly how you feel about her. Mm. Well, let, let's talk about that because you, you raise an interesting point, Mark, just the whole idea about um, the flexibility and mm -hmm. the tolerance in society and the idea that, you know, you're not mm -hmm. opposed to a woman expressing her interest in you because you're right. Unless you have that conversation, mm -hmm. you may not know that. So you then raise the issue of communication mm -hmm. as it relates to this whole issue of desperation and the perception of it. Let's talk about boundaries then for a moment, because mm -hmm. are there such things as boundaries with regards to what's acceptable and what's not with regards to women pursuing men? At what point does she perhaps risk being looked at as crossing the line? Or is there such a line out there? Um, I want to hit that and then I want to include something based on, on what Mark just said as well. Um, you know, and I, again, in our society, I just I think things are so free now that that mm -hmm. most people aren't even looking at boundaries. And what I wanted to add to that, I can I can think back to when I was in undergraduate school. Um, we had to put in a little work as men. Um, and these days. You don't have to put in much work at all. And I realize how that has, as a man, and when we're talking about manhood and what is expected and what should be, um, I've gotten a bit lazy and expect the woman to pursue and just sit back and I don't really have to do any work. But um, I don't believe that's the way it should be. And so as far as boundaries, our society <laughs> is such that there are very few boundaries and, and it's just it is what it is. You do what you do. And everybody's good with it. But at the end of the day, um, our roles as men and women are being affected. We're going to pick that back up in just a moment. But we'll be back in just a moment with more of Simply Single, the men's edition. Okay. One in four households. Forty percent of all women have person. never been married. Wait, don't get weighed down in gloomy facts. Download this new ebook by Patrice Thomas Conwell. Follow her journey to accept and appreciate the single life. Nobody ever told me I might not get married. One woman's journey to acceptance. Available at these retailers and more. Okay. Welcome back to Simply Single, the men's edition. We're talking today with Brian Cordell and Mark Lacey about the whole perception issue of women as appearing as desperate if they pursue men. Okay, let me, let me talk about it from this perspective. Um, isn't it 
isn't it more likely that I'll consider a woman, I'm taking me personally, isn't it more likely that I'll consider the woman that's pursuing me to be more desperate if she's doing things that I don't want her to do? Like, you know, she's showing up at my house uninvited. <laughs> she's yeah. calling me constantly throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Now, she obviously, I think one of you mentioned the issue of emotion. She has emotion. She has feelings. And maybe we've gone out a couple of times or I've entertained some conversation. Maybe it was some late night conversation. Maybe I was in a certain kind of mood a particular night. And I sent a message that I should not have sent. Right. And now it's on. So at what point do we as men have to hold ourselves accountable for the messages that we're sharing with women that may actually open up the door for them to pursue us. Well, you know, um, if the guy is trying to play Mac Daddy role, that like ups his game. He wants to tell the boys about when she came over at two o'clock in the morning or what have you. And nowadays, it seems like when other women find that out, uh, you know, via principle, it's a horrible thing. But in practice, that like, I mean, that gives him more uh, street player cred. For the women and the men or just, no, no, just the uh, for, for the man, for the especially if he's trying to play uh, the Mac Daddy role. OK. I mean, he, get, he gets more props as far as that's concerned. However, if he is serious about settling down with a special lady, that would be totally unacceptable. That would be that would be totally unacceptable. And it would be up to him at that point. Uh, to to verbally communicate or communicate in some way, shape, form or fashion to say, hey, this is not what I'm looking for. This All is right. not what I'm trying to stand for. All right. However, she needs to be careful and watch his actions because you got some men who try to play that righteous role to pull more women. Because it's this power thing there. There's a, a, a attraction in, in, in power. And um, if he's not uh, speaking in or, or, or if his actions are not reflecting what he's talking about, uh, then, you know, she really needs to step back and, and take a look at what she's about to get herself into. All right. Mark, she's sending flowers all the time. It's kind of nice. You know, you're around a job and people are taking note of the fact that, you know, once a week you're getting flowers on your desk. Beautiful flowers from uh you know, people that are looking, some from anonymous person that you really haven't talked much about until now. And then uh, she's uh, she's picking up the tab at dinner every now and then at some nice restaurants. I mean, it feels real good right now. Mm -hmm. But then at some point, your male ego kicks in mm -hmm. and you start thinking, you know, she's taking a lead here and I don't really feel comfortable with her taking a lead. And I'm kind of feel feeling like she's kind of pressing in on my territory right now. So I got to kind of back away from that. Um, how, how should a guy respond again? And I'm really, again, focusing on what the person is saying and how they're responding to what's going on or what they're really doing, because the message really should be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to my mind um, again from how our society functions and operates, I've I've realized that um, in my life, I've gotten to the point where I've become lazy and that really hasn't bothered me. It should bother me, mm. but it hasn't bothered me. Mm. So I believe that a mindset has been created where guys don't even start feeling like their manhood is being pushed to the side. We're mm. just comfortable with it and it's, it's acceptable. Um, the question that you asked before that about the responsibility that at all times men should be responsible. And again, because of the way things have gone, we just gotten so lazy and anything goes that once the problem is created, you look up and it's too late now. Everybody's off the hook when up front. Um, you know, maybe a card or uh, flowers once or twice. But cut it off. It doesn't need to, to continue to happen. If you if you allow it to continue to happen, you, you have problems if you're not sure of where you want to go with that relationship. And that's been a challenge for me mm -hmm. to on the front end, have the boundary, draw the line and be the man and dictate which direction the relationship goes. OK. Um, and of course, we know part of the challenge with that is, like you said, a lot of guys get lazy with it. You know, self-confession. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's easy to do that. 
You know, mm -hmm. you're out there, you're single. Um, you kind of see it as an opportunity to get to know this person better. Have a nice time from time to time. Save a little money. Save, mm, <laughs> definitely. Save a little money, perhaps, yeah. and uh, you know, keep the keep the house smelling nice with the flowers and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, it's an interesting dynamic because, mm. like you said, if you continue to allow that to happen, problems. You're going to create a challenge because the message that you really want to send is inconsistent with what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna create some real tension in that relationship. Mark, what I'm hearing both of you guys saying essentially is that in 2014, there's no script. You know, when we grew up in our day, there was a script. Mm -hmm. exactly. It was like, you know, as we got older and we got interested in girls and it was like, you know, we asked girls out and we did whatever we did. And then we went to college, we did the same kind of thing. And that's kind of how it went, you know? And I could never really imagine myself being a situation where um, at that time, where a woman would just, you know, constantly, a string of women would just ask me out, and I would reach a point of um, marriage, and I would expect my wife, my potential wife, to ask me to marry her. There was recently a social media uh, posting that got a lot of attention mm -hmm. with this woman who had asked this guy to marry her. Mm -hmm. And you still have some traditionalists today. You were talking about this whole idea of seeming desperate and aggressive. You know, a lot of women are counting the clock. There's no question about that. And they're watching that from a biological perspective and otherwise. So let's talk about that for one moment, because I know we're going to have Dr. Renee come in here in just a few minutes and, and really get the record straight for us. But this whole notion of at what point, and I guess that's part of my question about boundaries, is where do you draw the line? Is it okay for a woman to ask a, a guy to marry her? I... I couldn't I would not want that to happen to me because what what's going to happen is uh, people are going to look at the man. It's like, how could you let that happen? I mean, you're not a man and blah, 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 blah. And uh, why, how could you let this woman uh, get to this point to where she felt she needed to ask you, even though they didn't even know what the dynamics of uh, the, the, the relationship. They don't even know how long you two have been talking or dating or what have you. But uh, I don't think it should ever get to that point. Yeah. And if it does happen, of course, society is going to look at him as less than a man. And there's no telling how they're going to look at her. It's like that that like raises the bar for desperation. Yeah. You know, who's going to top that? Yeah. But uh, as Brian mentioned, uh, there needs to be a cutoff point. And, uh, you know, any man with a backbone who's trying to be the man in the relationship uh, would refuse to let that happen. Yeah, so going down on one knee's no option for that, a woman. That, mm, that, that's no option Okay. To me. That, right. That's not an option. <laughs> all right, all right. No. Brian, I'm going to come back. I want to hear your point, too. And then okay. we'll be back in just a moment with more of Simply Single, the men's edition, and we'll also have Dr. Renee in the chair to answer the question as well. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Simply Single, the men's edition. We're joined right now by Dr. Renee. Welcome to the broadcast. Good to be here. Thank Always you. Always good to see you, to lend your <laughs> unique perspective to our discussion. <laughs> and you've been listening to some of what we've been saying now. We're going to get back with you in just a moment. Okay. But I wanted to give Brian an opportunity, <laughs> first of all. Brian, she's going down on one knee, dude. Right. <laughs> She loves you. She wants to marry you. I hear you. It's 2014, man. Uh -huh. Are we you. okay? Are we good? I hear you. I hear you. Uh, the answer is simple to me. We serve a God that doesn't change. Mm. And we're not looking at this from a world's perspective, but a Christian's perspective. Mm -hmm. And if I am a man of God, uh, that's not what God 
expects or intends. So it's absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> all right, all right. That's that divine order <laughs> that exactly. uh, God has established. Mm-hmm. Dr. Renee, what are your thoughts on oh, that? I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's go back, first of all, to the desperation yeah. and um, not you men, of course. OK, but men, um, some men uh, seek out desperate women for whatever they reason. And something that you all may not even be aware of, but you can read a woman much better than women think that you can read them. You can smell a desperate woman from 500 feet away. Yes, you know. You know what they want, you know how they want it, and you know how to come at them. And so whenever you deal with desperate women and women who have lots of drama going on, you need to look at yourself because something about you drew you to that woman, okay? Because God gave you all that perception to know how to read the woman. So when you get yourselves in those situations, uh, it's just not by happenstance. It's just not, oh, it was just a slow Wednesday. No, you sort of knew what you were doing. OK. <laughs> and I always say, you know, men say, oh, I want to get married. I want to be married. Look at the woman he's dating. You can see whether he really wants to be married or not <laughs> by who he's dating. OK. <laughs> yes. All right. So that that let's just put that to rest <laughs> right there. And and so uh, any women who is watching this edition. OK. <laughs> is that man has already made up in his mind whether you are marriage material or not and what he plans on doing with you. When they say, oh, I don't know how I feel. I don't know what I think when when men say that. Oh, yes, they do. They just don't want to say it to the woman at that time because the woman may be meeting a need mm. that they have at that time. Okay? <laughs> so that's that part of that. Then whenever you have a woman who does things out of order, it does say in the Bible that a man that findeth a woman findeth a good thing. And now this has nothing to do with age group either. As I get this kind of clients all the time, I talk to younger people all the time and they still classify Okay, even younger men, women that are desperate or women that have crossed boundaries and they still do have names for them. Probably not as nice a names as you all have for them. Okay, <laughs> with your age. All right. But they still do. It is still not acceptable. It still isn't because it sends, as you all have said, it sends a message, you know, as to uh, I'm OK with this and I'm all right. And 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 this is the you know 21st century and we can just sort of get things out of order. That is really the work of the devil is to bring. I don't want to go so deep into it right now, but it, that compromise of where those uh, lines are blurred so far as men and women. You know, we have more unisex clothes and 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 more, you know, cross over this, that and the other, you know, and, and, and hairstyles that are sort of the same, you know, lots of stuff. It is honestly the work of the devil to blur those lines. And women, yes, we do want a man who's sensitive and kind and loving and all of those things. But God also still created him as the head of the house and as that hunter. And when you all are not in that order, it does not work properly. It does not because it's not of God. And women honestly do not want that kind of a man, a man that they can get down on one knee and, you know, it, it's a joke. The rest of your life, you know, <laughs> they're going to be cracking the whip. Oh boy, when I say, you know, <laughs> type thing. And, and they lose the respect for you, you know. And as Brian says, yes, men have gotten lazy. But I, I'm sorry to say, and I'm, I'm a female, and I'm sorry to say, but we as women have allowed it. You know, we don't require that a man give us their heart and work for it anymore. We don't require that. And because we don't require it, you all don't give it to us. But when it comes to marriage, who do you look for? You look for that woman who is, stands on that principle and you're going to have to find me. And if you don't find me, then we just won't get found. I don't have to, uh, you know, I can dress a certain way and, you know, be sort of cute, you know, and I know he likes pink, so I might wear pink or something. But outside of that, you're going to have to come at me. And if you don't, then it just is not of God. And a woman who stays around forever waiting, 
That is just what they're going to do. What I have come to understand is women who wait and wait and wait for a man. Yes, the man may eventually ask them to marry him, but he will never be as in love with you. He never will give you his complete heart if he had to do the work and there were boundaries set and there was time limits put. He's never going to do it. Well, let me ask you this then, um, and I appreciate all that insight. I'm sitting here trying to take notes. <laughs> right. Got some good stuff that you right. were sharing just a moment ago. Praise the Lord. So what do you say to that woman, your counselor? You mm -hmm. talk to a lot of women that mm -hmm. come to you and they're looking at their life and they're thinking, Correct. my life is slipping away from me because I don't have a man mm -hmm. or I'm getting older now and I don't have mm -hmm. kids or that kind of thing. How do you talk to women in a way that helps them really put all those things that you shared mm -hmm. in the proper context right. in terms of their own need to be connected to somebody? Because mm -hmm. we, we still have that need. Oh, definitely. That's a human need. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Is uh, when I talk to women, the most important thing that a woman needs to know is who they are, who they are as a person. What is it that you want out of life. What is it is your um, purpose, your God given purpose? And that is the kind of person you're going to draw to you. OK, and we get it backwards. We feel like that the man can give us the happiness and the fulfillment and all of that, you know, and that man is like, I'm trying to find my own self. Do what we doing, you know? And and so once they live in their purpose and in their truth and even with their issues, whatever those are, Lord, these are the issues I have, because the whole reason that you get married, you know, all of the stuff is good, you know, all of the, uh, you know, the earthly stuff, but you really only get married for one reason, and that is for your salvation. That's what it is. And so if this person does not lead me to Christ and doesn't make me a better person in Christ, then I already know that this is something earthly and it's not necessarily going to last. Yeah. And one thing that is so important is if you feel like that this may be the person or I'm not quite sure how to work this is if you put to memory first Corinthians 13, what love actually is. And does this woman bring this out in me? Does this man bring this out in me? It tells you right there what a relationship should be. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 13 kind of puts the caveat on a whole lot of situations <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. where people are trying to figure out, is mm -hmm. this the right thing for mm -hmm. me? Dr. Renee, thank you for all that great Thanks information. I hope me. that uh, the folk thank listening you. today have taken some good notes because that Praise was some good. good stuff that you Praise shared. Praise God. Thank, thank you as always. Brian, thank you as always. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, thank you as always. Thank you. And we hope to see you guys again real soon. Yes. Right. We'll be back with another edition of Simply Single, the men's edition soon. I'm Kenny Anderson. We hope you have a good day. Baby doll was in the dollhouse, Bobby Ken, how it's supposed to be. Then it seems like something missing from the equation, you and me. Tell me. Why am I not having fun? Yeah. In this game we play. Well, if you're tired of trying to fight in defense, see, you need to hear what I have to say. Okay, get your dancing shoes on. We're gonna have some fun today. Hey, hey, sing, don't people all alone. Say I'm okay